Hey, what is going on guys? So today we're going to be doing a review here of Wave 1 of Bandai's Gundam Universe line of figures here. So Wave 1 is including, of course, the original RX-782 Gundam, the Wing Gundam, and the Unicorn Gundam there in destroy mode. So the first thing you may notice is that these are not to scale. They're all the same size, whereas the Wing Gundam should be a little bit smaller. The Unicorn Gundam should be a little bit larger than the original RX-782, but they're all just around the same height. So scaling these together is not going to be correct. They're also a little bit different stylized from their kit or animation versions, so there's that going as well. Whether you like the new styling for them or not is something to consider. The great thing about these is that they are very affordable if you're looking for a pretty nice figure of one of these particular designs at a very affordable price. They retail for around $25. I know you can get them on USA Gundam Store, for example, for $22.99, and you, of course you can save 10% as well there with my coupon code ZAKURILIUS10, so check that out. I'll put the link to their site down below. But if you guys saw the unboxing or this the delivery video that I did for this, I actually got these directly from Bandai Spirits. So a huge thank you to them for reaching out and sending these out to me for reviewing and sharing with you guys. So as you guys know, I'm not typically a figure reviewer, although I've taken a look at a few in the past. I'll try to do my best here for you guys. I know some of you who are going to be watching this video are maybe uh, people who are well into figures like Robot Damashi and things like that and I'm not super well versed in that stuff. I'm more into the actual models themselves but I'll do my best to just give you guys a good review of the figures. At least give you a chance to see everything that they come with and all the details and all that. You can see what they do and decide if these are something that you want to pick up for yourself or not. So basically what we're going to do is take a look at them one by one and go through the different accessories that they come with and some different points of articulation. We'll take a look at a few poses and then we'll call it a day. So let's start off with the first one of course. The RX-782 Gundam. Alright, so for the Gundam, this is probably the one that's the least stylized compared to the other two in terms of, they basically just like change some of the angles of some of the lines in a bit. I kind of, you can see the arms, the arms really remind me a little bit more of like the shaping of the HG Jim Jim, sort of similar like that, especially like in the forearms. But you can see it's just small little proportion changes, little design changes here and there. It's still very obviously recognizable as the original Gundam though, of course. The colors are pretty nice. I like the bright yellow. I do wish that the the red and the blue, especially there in the torso section, were maybe a little bit brighter as well, just in their color tones. Just a, a personal feeling for me. I don't know, maybe you guys like that a little bit darker blue for that. I just personally like the color scheme a little bit lighter usually for the RX-782, but it's pretty nice. We don't have any of that like kind of RG style two-tone coloring or anything like that going on with this. That maybe would have been cool, but again, definitely feels like they were trying to keep these as simple as poss possible for them, not really putting in a huge ton of effort on them. If you wanted something much nicer just straight out of the box for a figure like this, then obviously there's the Robot Damashi versions and things like that, of course. But I could definitely see a lot of opportunity for this in going in and just doing some panel lining and painting on this by yourself. If you want to just paint in some of those details and everything like that, give it a nice coat of top coat and this would probably be looking even extra cooler, even more cool. <laughs> But yeah, I do like some of the new style changes that they made for this. I think it looks pretty cool. So let's check out the stuff that it comes with here. All right, so the first thing that it comes with is an action base stance that just clips up underneath the waist as usual. And then you, it's just got this three millimeter peg here, which you can plug on the top of an action base like that. In the instructions, it says it's meant to be plugged on top of a Tamashi stage act base. And I don't know if that's different, but at least plugging it onto just standard Gumpla base here. The problem is that it's a round pegs so it's going to be kind of like rotating side to side so if you put it on there in like a certain pose gravity is going to make it fall down to one side so it's not really going to be the most stable base for this but we'll try it out here in a bit we'll see how that works i'm sure i'll have some balance issues we do also have some option hands aside from just the closed fists that come on there you have these holding and trigger finger hands so we've got trigger finger hand for the right for holding onto the beam rifle and for the left, just a standard holding hand for the beam sabers. The beam sabers are up here above the shoulder. Pretty interesting shape for them. They're not just your standard looking kind of round beam sabers. They have a little bit sort of uh, shape to them that really reminds me a lot of the Turn A Gundam it's beam sabers. Beam, it's, it's the handles anyway. As for the beams themselves, they're not quite like the Turn A's uh, very straight, thin beam saber effects. These are just kind of the typical shape for our beam saber effects. And it's in a metallic pink painted color here. So it looks like the plastic is white and they just got this metallic pink sprayed over the top of that so that just plugs into their 
simply enough like that so that looks pretty cool but in case you weren't into that I wanted to also try this out with just a regular beam saber effect part from like a master grade kit if you wanted if you like preferred the clear look and it looks like that will fit in there but it feels pretty loose so maybe just put maybe a little bit of glue here on the on the tip of that wait for it to dry of course so that just gives that a little bit thicker a uh, little bit there and then when that plugs into there that'll be uh, thick enough to stay in. Otherwise, I mean, if you're just posing it like that, I mean, it'll stay in there like that. As long as you're not shaking it around, it'll fall out. Aside from those, then of course we have the Gundam's beam rifle there with some nice uh, metallic yellow, uh, metallic gold or uh, metallic yellow, I guess, yeah, for the scope for that. So the camera will move a little bit side to side for that, but this forward handle doesn't move at all. That isn't going to rotate, so you can't do like the two-handed pose of him uh, shooting the beam rifle unfortunately and also this doesn't have any way to clip onto the back skirt or anything unfortunately that probably also would have been cool as an extra feature for this so the design looks cool I like the new design that they've done with this rifle it looks nice but it's missing a couple little features that I think would have been nice to have in there as well it's very basic very simple I also wish that this would have included the Gundam's bazooka but who knows if they're gonna maybe make some accessory packs for this or something down the line I don't think that they're going to but that could be something to include in a future accessory pack or something, the bazooka for this. Uh, we do also have the, the, the shield. This is the last accessory for this, just the Gundam's shield. I do really like the styling for this. It really looks like they went for a very seed kind of looking styling for this. It really looks like the Strikes shield in a way, but of course it has the typical Gundam cross there on the front. This uh, mounting here on the inside is just a ball joint, basically, that that plugs onto, so this little shield will be able to move around a little bit on that ball joint. This plugs into the side of the arm and the hand can hold on to here. I don't think there's going to be a way, any way to have this on the arm without holding it in the hand, so you will have to use that left holding hand, so you will have to use that in unison, which means that you can't have the shield on the arm and hold the beam saber at the same time, which is a little bit disappointing, but that just plugs onto there. Simple enough and seems very secure, so I don't think that we're going to have any issues with holding that, but let's try some posing. But I suppose maybe before the posing we should just run through some of the articulation quickly, just so you guys can get an idea about that so here for the head that will look up all the way up to there so pretty good uh, upward angle for that looks up pretty nice and far and just the painting on the head looks nice you got the eyes there in gold those are looking really good and you got the little red bits the red up there for the camera as well on the back of the head we got some red for that camera as well and just the little black in the vents on the side of the face all look pretty nice so then it can look down to there so up and down movement on that is feeling pretty good it does feel like it's already getting a little bit loose though the more I kind of move it around so maybe don't play with it too much or it'll loosen up that joint you'll have to find some way to tighten that up going down here to the stomach section we have a pretty nice stomach crunch there forward and back and then side to side and not really too much but forward and back it does look pretty good can rotate this a little bit there as well but it looks like not really a whole lot of a side to side rotation here either basically just a little bit like that this lower section of the red there seems like it's just fixed to the bottom part of the waist so you're not really going to be getting a whole lot of movement there it looks like background here on the back these little thruster bells don't move or anything like that basically you could just rotate the beam saber handles that's pretty much the only thing that's able to move there on the backpack going to the shoulders here the whole thing is plugged into a ball joint there basically so you've got a little bit of forward and back movement there sort of nothing really too much the shoulder armor itself does move a little bit on its own but again emphasis on a little bit not really much at all ultimately you can get the arm up to a little bit more than 90 degrees there for upward movement you can see there is a little bit a little bit of detail up inside of there but then we got just some rotation there at the top of the arm and then just a single joint in the elbow which is just going to well no i take that back actually it is a double joint but because of the design of this you can't get more than really just like 90 degrees there at the elbow unfortunately so that's pretty disappointing and then for the wrist just a ball joint there for that keeping it simple there as well for the skirting armor the skirt armor parts will be able to move up and down a little bit like that separately the side skirt armor again just a little bit up and down and the back skirt armor is just all one piece here so that's just all set exactly like that in the hip joint that is actually able to drop up and down so you can pop that up and you can drop that down to give you a higher range of motion so that's pretty cool that hip joint there basically has two settings upper and a lower setting for that you can drop it down if you need to do some kind of kneeling pose but the skirt armor is kind of getting in the way although you can pop it up a little bit out of the way like that it can't really get it up out of the way enough to do a whole lot of forward range of motion out of this basically even in the lower setting you're going to be struggling to get 
even up to 90 degrees out of the upward movement there at the leg. Then we can bend the knee, double joint here in the knee, but again, it's only gonna give you a little bit more than 90 degrees, not a full bend there, unfortunately, at the knee, not a full 180 degree bend anyway. Down here to the ankles, we've got basically a double ball joint here, one at the base of the lower leg, one inside the foot. So you can kind of move that around. The ankle armor there is mounted onto the middle section of frame there between the leg and the foot. So that's gonna kind of move a little bit there on its own, a little bit up and down. You can kind of move the feet out. So you can kind of set the angle out to the side like that for a little bit wider stance. Gonna look a little bit goofy with like the little bit of a weird bend there. But I guess you could do it a little bit more, something like that looks a little bit better. There we go. But yeah, side to side movement you've got some of that if you kind of just move the ankle out of the way ankle armor i should say anyway and then up to about there down to about there it's not a lot it's not great but it's okay up underneath the feet some very nice detail there it was just all in red so you can paint some of that detail in if you wanted to have that looking a little bit more nicer all right then posed up it is definitely going to be looking pretty cool it's really suffering though in the articulation you're not going to be able to get it into any really super dynamic poses which is a shame if you have a kit that's really nicely stylized like this or oh sorry a figure that's really nicely stylized like this you're going to want it to be at least doing some really cool dynamic poses and this one you can do maybe a couple but it's not going to be really the best for that and the other thing it is definitely suffering from not being able to stay straight on my action base here as it's kind of rotating around you're gonna see the Gundam kind of rotating strangely as well because it's I tried to make it just basically straight up so it wouldn't be suffering from the gravity pulling it around on that uh, just peg base connection there but that is going to be a problem for this if you wanted to have it set at like an angled pose it's going to be weighed down to one side just due to gravity for that. So yeah, just be prepared to maybe do some gluing, gl gluing that onto an action base or something like that just to make it nice and secure, or finding a way to put this up on action base and have it not suffer from that. But that is definitely going to hinder some of your posing options without any glue. So while the articulation leaves a lot to be desired, the weapons is kind of a mixed bag. I think the new design of the shield and the rifle look really cool. I do wish that the rifle had a little bit more to it, like a peg to plug that onto the back skirt, or having the ability to rotate that forward handle as well. That would have been nice. And I think it would have been nice for us to also have the bazooka included as well. It's, it's not quite as iconic, of course, as the rifle. I think the bazooka is definitely, of course, a pretty standard accessory for the RX-72, and it's just a shame that it wasn't included. Real quick side note too, this shield can be mounted to the backpack by rotating the handle up like that and that peg will plug into the center of the backpack here. This plugs into there and then you can sort of rotate the shield off to the side a little bit but you can't really get it at too much of an angle. It's going to be about to there, that's going to be the extent of how much you can really turn that but it's not too bad so that's kind of cool that it can at least plug the shield onto its back. All right, then moving on to the Wing Gundam next. I think it's gonna be sharing pretty much kind of a lot of the same pros and cons that we saw with the RX-78 2 with a few different things, obviously, because it's a pretty different design. So we'll go through all of that. But this one, again, I like the new styling that they did for this. Just, again, just changing some of the little details, some of the proportions here and there. It's got some nice bulk there in the arms. It's got some cool shapes there with the skirting armor. Uh, it's a little bit more pointed, I feel like, than some other versions of the Wing Gundam. And again, we have that nice sprayed metallic gold there for the parts on the wings, the forearms, the shoulders, the front of the chest, and for that metallic green part there at the front center of the chest as well, also looking very nice. So the pre-painting on this one looking pretty cool. This one as well, aside from the gold, is, seems to be pretty much in the same colors as the Gundam, although the white is more white. The Gundam is a little bit of an off-white. This is a very white color, though the blue and red are pretty much the exact same colors as with the Gundam, it seems like. But whereas with the Gundam, I personally prefer a little bit lighter colors. With the Wing Gundam, I think this little bit kind of dark blue uh, and just kind of a little bit darker red are pretty fitting. They seem to be just the kind of standard colors for the Wing Gundam. I think look good there for the Wing Gundam. So the colors, just uh, as it is, do look pretty nice. But let's go ahead and talk about the articulation of this guy before we get into the accessories. I first off just want to note that the pre-printing on my face of mine is a little bit messed up. You can see the two little lines there for his like kind of mouth vents there are not centered, they're a little bit off to the side, making him look like he's giving a little bit of a hmm 
kind of face and it looks kind of weird it doesn't look very good if you're like in a pose or something you're not really going to notice maybe quite as bad but it's still the fact that those are off center does kind of ruin the face a little bit so that's too bad otherwise i mean like the quality of everything the nice uh, metallic silver there for the eyes and the head camera that all looks good uh, as for the head articulation it will go up to about like that seems like it's kind of wanting to bounce back but it's pretty much similar to the rx 782 up and down to there is very nice for the stomach section we've got a little bit forward and back stomach crunch here not quite as much as the rx782 i feel like but still a little bit side to side on this one once again not really much of anything rotation again similar to the rx782 you've got a little bit side to side but not full rotation there at the stomach section back here for the wings these are just plugged in via a ball joint here to the backpack so you can move those around up and down a little bit just rotate that on the ball joint and then as you saw earlier the wings do open up like that these two parts move individually so you can set those to whatever pose you like unfortunately this top part here has a pretty nasty seam line through that so through the blue and this painted gold section there you've got that nasty seam as long as you're not really paying attention to the backpack you won't really notice that but the wings being a pretty key feature to the wing gundam obviously having a big seam line there right behind his head is a little bit unsightly Moving back to the shoulders, these are just again once again on a ball joint so that can move forward and back. This one the shoulder armor can move up I feel like maybe a little bit more. Maybe it's just because it's automatically pointed up so maybe not quite that much but you can bring the arm up to let's see maybe a little bit higher than with the RX-782 or about the same really up to about there so that's going to be the extent of that otherwise again just a rotation there at the top of the arm once again a double joint at the elbow but this time we're getting a little bit more than 90 degrees so the elbow joint on this one is a little bit better this claw bit will move forward and back like that and it won't move all the way to the front but just forward to there which is good for getting out of the way when you're bending the elbow you need that to move out of the way to get any sort of elbow bend out of this so that's good when the arm is straight that can just go back to its position like that once again the wrist is just on a ball joint the skirt armor again will move up and down on its own but up not really all that much so not getting out of the way all that much side to side uh, skirt armor there will move up and down a little bit as well the back skirt once again just fixed here on there the hip has the same gimmick of being able to drop down into the lower or upper position for how you want to pose that even at the lower position once again you can't really get the leg up to anywhere close to 90 degrees it's about 45 a little bit more than 45 i guess Double joint there in the knee, once again giving you a little bit more than 90 degrees. That's going to be about the extent of that. Cool detail there with the thruster there at the back of the leg. And the ankles going to be moving uh, pretty much the same again for this one as well. You can get it side to side a little bit like that. And then point it up to the front a little about like that. Point it down to about there. And then full detail there up underneath the feet as well. It doesn't fully transform if anyone was wondering if this could transform basically all the transformation is just rotating the head around but you need to be able to kind of like bend the knees in a weird way which it doesn't do and also the shield doesn't have any way to plug onto this so with that let's get into talking about the accessories that we've got for this so once again we've got the same kind of action base adapter here and then again aside from the closed fist that he's got on there by default we have two other option hands one trigger finger hand for the buster rifle and one holding hand for the shield now unfortunately no beam sabers included with this um, figure at all that is unfortunate but here's how the shield is going to look it does look nice with a little metallic green there for that and just the overall shape and design of this does look pretty good it has this part here which is on a ball joint that i'll plug into the side of the arm for the handle it doesn't move you have to pull it out and plug it back in and a little bit hard to get out of there pull it out like that plug it back in like that and then you can have the hand hold on to the handle there for the shield and then of course we have his buster rifle here as well with a little bit of pre-painted gold on there but i think painting like the canisters in a separate color of gray could also look nice just to add a little bit more color to this it's very standard very simple just nothing really moves on it but nothing really is meant to move on it so once again the design is pretty nice it's just very simple and that's just fit into, into the hand no problem so again the wing essentially is suffering from the same pros and cons as with the rx782 uh, the articulation is not very good so posing it is going to be a little bit difficult and it's not really helped by the action base adapter that is included and then the weapons well nice the shield and the beam uh, rifle do look pretty cool I do wish that it was also including a beam saber just to have that extra accessory in there as well and the beam saber is also you know the bust rifle is obviously the most iconic 
weapon for the Wing Gundam, but it did use the Beam Saber plenty in the anime as well, so having the Beam Saber included, which is a small thing, I mean, the bazooka at least is a little bit larger for the Gundam, I can see why it would cost a little bit more to have a bazooka in included with that. I don't think it really would have costed a whole lot to include just a single Beam Saber and handle. They probably could have just made it all as one part, because the pink effect part of that would be pre-painted anyway, so just mold it all as one piece and just have that one extra piece included in here. Uh, don't know if that would have really cost Bandai a whole lot, but it definitely would have added a lot to the kit just as an extra option for people who do like that option for the Wing Gundam. But I think while it is lacking in articulation, uh, the wings do help to make it look a little bit more dynamic just because you have those cool looking wings out the back of it as well. Alright, and then finally we'll take a look here at the Unicorn Gundam in Destroy Mode, and it's definitely looking really nice. The changes to this I think are really cool. They went with the kind of more angled, if that's possible, the Unicorn's already very angular kit, but they changed up the angles of a little bit uh, here and there, and it does look pretty nice. You got The colors are just pretty standard though, it's just white, and then it's got that nice dark navy blue for the feet and the backpack. The colors of the Psycho Frame is seems to be a slightly metallic, kind of fluorescent pink color. I think that they could have gone maybe a little bit more metallic with that, like something we would see maybe with like, the, I think the Gundam Converge figures, that's usually a little bit more metallic color, but it's a pretty nice color either way. And then you've got some of that nice gold on the V-fin there as well. So it's all looking pretty cool. But let's bring it up close to take a look at some of the articulation for him as well. All right, so once again, the pre-painting on the face on this one looking really nice, the metallic green there for the eyes, the head camera, as I mentioned, the gold for the V-fin, it all looks good. The articulation though, gonna be a little bit lacking. You can point the head down very far, but up, it's not going to have that nice upward bend here at the neck like the other two had. Basically, it's just kind of stuck at looking straight forward. That's about the highest you can get that, unfortunately. Here in the stomach section, we have a decent ab crunch there as well, forward to about to there, backwards, not really all that much, just a little bit forwards. That's pretty much it. Once again, no side to side, and the rotation here at the waist is gonna be almost non-existent. You have like a couple millimeters, that's it. So the waist section, definitely the weakest of the three. Let's go over here to the shoulders and let's just go to the backpack here first. These bits that which hold the beam sabers for some reason are not fixed pose. They're just on a ball joint so you can move those around. It doesn't really seem to need to be for any reason. And I'm just finding this one is quite loose already on mine. So I may just want to just glue those in place so those just fix like that. There really wasn't any need for these to be articulated. But anyway, back around here to the shoulders. Once again, the shoulders just on a ball joint so you can move that around. The shoulder armor itself will move up and down a little bit like that. You can bring the arm up to, once again, a little bit more than 90 degrees upwards there and pop off the shoulder armor. Anyway, then just rotation here at the top and our elbow is going to get to about a little bit more than 90 degrees and that is about it. You can see the beam saber is very thin on here. It looks kind of weird there on the side of the arm how thin that is, but that's just the design of them. The, the actual like design is very similar to what we saw with the RX-78 too. If you see them side to side, they both have the kind of similar look and shape to them and they're just not perfectly round. They're more oval shaped or in this one, they're very thin anyway, but interesting design for the beam savers anyway. And then the wrist, once again, just on a ball joint. Down here too, the skirt armor, once again, these will move up to about there. So it actually, actually it seems to be about the best of the three for how high the skirt armor will move. Over here, the side skirt armor will also move up and down a little bit. And once again, the back skirt is just one big fixed piece there. So that's just stuck onto there. This one as well has the hip joint that will drop down and up and down like that for setting that. If you drop that down, you can bring the leg forward. Probably the highest of the three if you don't, yeah, pop out that front skirt armor. You can get it up to almost 90 degrees. Pretty extreme knee action going on there with that, but the bend of the knee is going to be probably the weakest of the three. It can, can't really even seem to get to 90 degrees just because of the design of this. It is a double joint, but just because of the design of the unicorn inherently has this bit here, which was originally a problem with the Master Grade Verica, and they changed that for the OVA version. They made that a little bit smaller so that you can actually get a little bit more of a knee bend out of that. But in this case, they went with the design that's just not really good for knee articulation anyway. Down here to the ankle armor, it's just the, the construction of it is the same as the other two, so you can get it side to side about to there like that. And you can get that up to the front, not really too far at all, just because of this part here at the front, just kind of blocking that from any sort of front movement there. But down, you can get it pointed pretty far down, which is not too bad, like that up underneath the feet, some detail there. And moving this around, I've found just already 
it does kind of gets annoying as these ankle armor sometimes gets stuck up underneath this part here like that and you kind of have to pop that out of there again to move that in the right direction so that's a little bit annoying so I feel like already the articulation seems to be kind of the weakest of the three so far unfortunately but let's move on to his accessories we've got the action base adapter here and then once again the same hand options aside from the closed fist we've got a trigger finger hand for the right and a holding hand here for the left we got the same beam saber effect parts here, like with the RX-78 II, two of those. We've got the beam magnum, which has some nice metallic green painted in there for the camera, but once again, the secondary handle on this is actually not even existent on there, so you won't be able to do any two-handed poses with this. Also, it doesn't have any peg for plugging this onto the side of the arm or the backpack or anything at all, so it's just nice enough design, but if you don't want to have it in the hand, there's not really a whole lot of function. It doesn't really do a whole lot. One thing though that you can do with this is you can plug the beam effect part, beam saber effect parts into the end of this barrel of the rifle as well. And it's a little bit tight in there but it makes for a pretty cool effect part if you wanted to have that sort of uh, firing effect part and you can actually do that with the ARC-78 II as well. So same with that beam rifle you can attach the effect part into that so that should be pretty cool for some posing with the ARC-78 II for sure. And then finally of course the unicorn's shield here once again in destroy mode so it's basically just one big solid piece with all of this pre-painted uh it looks like yeah i think it's just all just pre-painted you have the connector piece here on the back now interestingly uh the, typically the shield connects around this part like around like that on the unicorn but this one actually connects a little bit further down around here on the side of the arm which is a little bit different than other versions of the unicorn and you also don't need to have the hand holding onto the shield so you can hold a beam uh, saber while you've got the shield attached onto the arm so that's pretty cool so as for the missing accessory of the unicorn, I guess we could say it would be the bazooka. But in this case, I don't know, I don't really feel quite like as much as the other two, whereas I really felt like the bazooka was missing from the RX-78 II, the beam saber was missing from the wing. Uh, not quite as much with this one because even the high grade Unicorn Gundam Destroy Mode doesn't come with a bazooka, it only comes with the Unicorn Mode version, so it, it doesn't really seem as bad. But I don't know, maybe that's just me personally. If you're more of a fan of the Unicorn Gundam using the bazooka, you might feel a little bit disappointed, I guess, if that, uh, or you might feel that you, you wish that that was included more than I do. But of course, having that included would have been nice, but just don't feel that it was quite as necessary as the accessories for the other two. But anyway, uh, I think this is, it is really nice that you can hold the Beam Saber while the shield is connected onto the arm that is the cool thing about this one where you couldn't do that with the other two so that's nice and then aside from just the pretty weak articulation it is still just going to look really cool i think the unicorn is in destroy mode is just a really cool looking design and the way that they've designed this particular figure does look pretty nice as well so it's, it's a good looking figure to be sure i think a little bit of panel lining and maybe putting some decals and maybe a little bit of detail painting and things on this to just help break up the white parts a little bit i think would definitely look really nice as well but just straight out of the box like this it does look pretty good so there you have it folks there is wave one of gunnam universe and not bad there's good points and bad points to them and i feel like for the price they're not bad i mean they're not the best figures i've ever seen they look cool they've got some cool stuff uh the price is really nice for under 30 dollars that's not bad at all around 20 25 dollars around the price range for that it's not too bad that's it if you can get the same gundam in high grade form for around the same price or less then i don't know if the high grade gunpo would be a better option i think it could very well be it depends on what you want if you want to build be able to build it yourself and you want better articulation and in some cases some more weapon options then the high grade version is going to be nice they may not be quite as detailed and they are going to be of course smaller so there's some pros and cons some trade-offs between the two ultimately i think for me probably i would just prefer the high grade gunpla there is also of course the mass grade versions of the gundams as well but then you're getting into the 50 60 dollar price point it's probably more comparable to compare them to the robot damashis at that point that are at a similar price point with these i'm just comparing them to the high grade just because these are like the cheaper versions of a robot damashi so the cheaper version of the mass grade would be the high grade so that's why I'm just comparing them to a high grade so I don't know whether you end up wanting to pick up one of these or a high grade or mass grade or whatever version of your favorite Gundam I suppose there's always going to be good and bad points so I just want to say again a thank you to Bandai for sending these to me to check out and share this with you guys hopefully the information in this video has been helpful uh, for those of you guys who've been maybe thinking about you wanting to pick up one of these or not I'd say you know if you want go for it pick up one of them it's 25 bucks it makes for a cool figure 
put upon your shelf. But if you're like me and you prefer building it by yourself and having a little bit more options in that sense, then there's obviously model kit forms also available from Bandai as well. So either way, I don't think Bandai is really going to mind whichever one you end up going with. But if you're curious and checking out this line, I would say pick one up and try it out for yourself. Uh, if you guys have any other further questions or comments about these, of course, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye, guys.